Well, first of all, uh, thank you to all the organisers for uh, inviting me to share an idea with you today and perhaps help uh, a particular segment of the community who I'm uh, speaking for. And also thank you to all the supporters and collaborators worldwide who have uh, kept this project uh, well underway. Around seven million babies are born each year with serious and often deadly genetic defects. These defects traumatise families and communities. I'd like to read a quote from a parent of a child with inherited disease. It is a gruesome battle to take care of our sick sons and daughters, especially when their diseases are rare and any available support to us is minimal. We often go into the fight alone. In some cases, a parent could not face the reality of raising two sick children and has sadly chosen to abandon the whole family. And for me, that's what it's all about. That's why I'm standing here to help. I've been researching genetic variation for the last 30 years to find out what causes inherited disease because I want to alleviate the suffering of people like these families. Today, I want to tell you about my journey to help these families, and I'll tell you how. Thanks to the genetic revolution and the internet, we can now see a way to give people the tools and to erase the suffering of future generations. How big a problem are we talking about? Worldwide, over three million children born with a serious defect or genetic or partly genetic origin will die each year. 90% of these births and deaths are occurring in developing countries. There are over 20,000 genetic diseases because this is the number of genes we have. Some of the more common of these diseases are cystic fibrosis, which affects about one in a thousand births, thalassemia, the so-called Mediterranean disease, and haemophilia, the so-called royal disease. Much rarer are diseases like maple syrup urine disease and fish odour syndrome, which are not too nice to have in the family. Many of the, these diseases are fatal. Cystic fibrosis sufferers die of malfun malfunction in their 20s, and a similar fate awaits those affected with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I've seen the pain of children who suffer these diseases, and I've met the parents desperate to alleviate their suffering. For 30 years, I've asked myself, what is causing this disease? Why can't we help these people? And how can I help? In the past, we couldn't help much, but just treat the symptoms. But the genetic revolution has changed all that. Some 150 years ago, Mendel established the basic rules of genetics with his peas in Brno, Czech Republic. 57 years ago, Watson and Crick discovered the structure of DNA. And in 2003, the Human Genome Sequence, or blueprint, was published. Now what we need is to identify and understand all the causes of all genetic diseases. That is my mission, and the mission of everyone whose work contributes to the Human Variome Project. This is a global endeavour that we lead from Melbourne with the support of a dedicated team of hundreds and possibly over a thousand of supporters worldwide. Our goal is to continue the genetic revolution by delivering what we believe will be the single most effective means of minimising the human suffering in the 21st century. How? By discovering, collecting and sharing information on every possible mutation in 20,000 genes that make up each human being. Then we can determine the impact of each of these variations on human health and alleviate needless suffering. So let's go back a few steps to the cause of the problem we are trying to solve. Why do inherited diseases happen? The problem all comes down to our DNA. Let me take you back to basics. What is our DNA? It's a string of three billion units or bases of genetic information, the genome, which makes us develop and grow normally via the proteins produced from each gene. If a vital base is changed, called a mutation, we will develop an inherited disease. I'd like to show you a small portion of the genetic information that's in all of us. This particular section has eight to 10 of the 20,000 proteins that we need. The green string in the middle represents the DNA bases. I'd like you to keep an eye on the four big letters at the top. 
So let's zoom out. Now we can see about one-sixth of the protein or genetic information. And zooming right out, here's the whole thing, all 20,000 proteins that we need. As you can see, there's an enormous amount of data and it's very complex. Each gene, protein and disease has its own group of experts. That gives you an idea of the amount of work going on around the world. Finding the fault which causes an inherited disease is like trying to find a needle in a haystack, unless you know where to look, which you do in some cases. Thus, an error in the wrong place can give us inherited disease. In the West, we have about a 1% chance of having an inherited disease at birth. Another way of putting this is that if there are 900 people in this auditorium, there will be 30 people carrying a faulty gene or mutation for cystic fibrosis. If two of those people have children, one in four will have cystic fibrosis, one of the most common inherited diseases. The sequence on the screen happens to be from Craig Venter's DNA, one of the first scientists to sequence the human genome. But it is not very different from each of us in this room, except for the differences that make me different from you. This is hanging on my wall in my office to remind me of who we are. You'll see more about DNA structure, I believe, in Drew Berry's presentation later today. So now we understand why inherited disease happens. Why can't we offer more medical help to people who carry them? I'd like to read another quote, this time from a parent waiting patiently for things to change. No words can express the bittersweet experience and surprises that we parents feel daily, feel and face daily in this long battle. Despite our anxiety, we believe in breakthroughs and try to look on the bright side. We cherish every moment with our children, finding comfort in their optimism and inner peace, which help us to see what family love and caring is all about. The main reason we can't offer more help is because for a long time there has been no single organised collection anywhere in the world of all the information we have about genetic mutations. Twenty years ago, when my colleagues and I first went looking, we found many individuals, including giants of the field in genetics, were collecting data as an independent, unpaid cottage industry. These works, these efforts were fragmented, incomplete, and they were not being shared easily. These people collected the data to help their patients. For example, if a Korean researcher, Korean researcher found a mutation causing inherited disease, like colon cancer, in a patient, that information wasn't available to an American patient with the same mutation because the data was not submitted to public databases. This information is often life-saving but it wasn't get, getting to all the people who needed it. For example, it could be a colon had been, would be taken out uh, unnecessarily or vice versa, or someone's breast was removed or not, or vice versa. So I asked myself, what could I do to make the situation better? I decided to develop ways to share this information. We started long before the internet was ubiquitous by creating a journal, Human Mutation, to focus on mutation. This helped in a big way to get data into databases. Information at this time moved around the world more by paper and fax. It wasn't enough. Tens of thousands of diagnosticians, clinicians and researchers were collecting information about genetic defects and mutations worldwide but not sharing it. Ironically, as genetics got smarter and the human genome decoded things, it even became harder. We knew more, so there was more information that needed to be shared. Fortunately, the internet came along, which has given us the means of immediate communication and cataloguing. It has allowed us to begin gathering and sorting a Mount Everest of scientific data and make it instantly and publicly available. In 2006, I led a meeting that initiated the Human Variome Project. We brought together the World Health Organization, UNESCO, OECD, European Commission, with major databases, genetic organizations, and representatives of 30 countries, and persuaded them to sign up to our vision. Today, the Human Variant Project is an international consortium with an elected scientific advisory committee. It is facing and overcoming the challenges of operating across 
political borders, in countries with different religious and moral values, different approaches to medical ethics, and different standards of scientific training. Dozens of countries and dozens of specialist medical research groups are members of the Human Variant Project, and they all share the vision of reducing the burden of genetic disease on the world population. On the map, the red dots mark the countries that have signed up and willing to collect and contribute their data to the population's genetic variation so far. This will share the, least, the workload of collecting the information we need to help from those countries, help those from those countries and those from around the world. The green dots are those countries where we have letters of support and who therefore are likely to participate in the Human Variant Project in future. This map just summarises all that and shows the countries that have committed support, at least, to the Human Variant Project. We've come a long way, but there are still some gaps to fill. As a group, we believe that the collection of information on every instance of a genetic variation and its effect on health is the only way a vision can be achieved. Sharing information on genetic variation and its consequences will allow more accurate and quicker diagnosis, alleviating the burden of disease on the community. The simple act of sharing will also allow existing treatments to be delivered more effectively to patients and new treatments and cures to be developed and trialled. An exciting moment in our journey happened in January this year when China committed itself to providing $300 million to the project. Their, their investment represents a quarter of the funding of the resources we need, and it deliberately matches China's share of the world's population. China can proudly say they are leading the world in this area of health care. There has never been a major commitment from the Australian government, but they hope that they will follow the Chinese lead. During the next decade, we will see the top 7,000 diseases documented properly and completely, and I'm sure many more mutations will be discovered and shared. We'll quickly see the difference. Families and communities will be able to plan for the future because we will be able to give them the tools to see into their possible futures. In 10 to 20 years, as definition of our genetic sequences become cheaper and the technology slicker, we will all carry our genome code around with us. Some will say it will be just another application for our very smartphones. And when we meet, fall in love, and our thoughts turn to having a family, we will compare our similarities and difference with this new and unique way providing us with choices of how to manage our family planning. This is my passion, and the passion of many others, to reduce the scourge of genetic disease on humanity. And it is, I think, an idea worth sharing. Thank you very much for listening.